Hello everyone, I hope you're all there. Welcome to my kitchen um, and welcome to Cook Along. This is it, my Cook Along at home. So I'm very excited about today because it's a really sort of easy, simple, but it's learning to chop up some vegetables. Now, I know we didn't say that, but I thought if you have chopped the vegetables up, you can just watch me how to do it. So if you're because if you're chopping and watching at the same time sometimes you miss things so i think it's probably quite a good idea if you have but if you haven't you just go along with me so what are we going to do we're going to do some weed and bread i love it so simple two minute wonder two minute wonder so let's just check we have everything now what i'd like you to do it's really important is to tell me if i'm going too fast slow down tell me to slow down if i'm shouting tell me to stop shouting but you know that's me anyway so don't worry about it so um, if you basically if you basically um, think you want me to reiterate something that you didn't quite understand tell me to repeat it very important so all these little things is up to you to just email me or just text it on on the Facebook and we will answer your questions so don't worry I will I will bring it up and we will do it straight away or I'll stop now the one thing is I'm not drinking okay sorry guys I am missing it so much but I'm not I'm giving up drink for till the first of March ouch it's real ouch, but I'm determined to do it because January is too short, really. So I know it's my birthday, January. I'm not even going to have some champagne. That's how, how serious I am. So basically, I'm going to just stop it all. I'm going to give my body a rest. Um, I'm into really good food, you know, sort of not starting but healthy just good solid food which we all need we need warmth it's a cold day so we need to warm ourselves up so this is why I'm doing what I'm doing now today so we're starting with our wheat and bread I've as already said I'm going to make some rolls big rolls out of it so and we'll make a few then I'm going to do the minestrone soup now um, very simple and we can take it at your own pace so I'm sure people won't mind just taking a bit slower today so people can do it so the so first thing we've got uh, stone ground flour now stone ground flour the reason I use this is if you didn't know it's still got the wheat germ in it some of it anyway it's still got the whole goodness in it and that's why I always use stone ground flour it's the best flour better than wholemeal it's better than all the way but I have put a little bit of I've put a little bit of the flour in white flour it just helps because it's got more more gluten in it because it's just sort of stabilizes a bit more but it's less it makes it less heavy so that's what I, why I've done that because otherwise it's a little bit heavier with just the stone ground now I'm also putting in so we'll mix those two ingredients some soft butter now this is this riches it up makes it last longer mind you this bread doesn't last long at all in our family so we just literally oh turn your oven on turn your go and turn your oven on. and will you put your tray in your tray that you're going to cook it on just put it on a tray an ordinary tray don't bother to flour it i mean don't bother to butter it or anything just put it on a tray okay so i'll give you a moment just while you turn your oven on 220 started at 220 celsius all right so that's quite high number five gas i presume something like that so we there we are so you literally you put your butter into bread crumbs all right so we'll just pop that in that's so simple now next thing i'm going to do is take some salt and i'm just going to add a pinch of salt bung it all in that's fine now the rising agent bicarb of soda now this is this is the 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 thing this is the um the thing that actually helps bicarb the soda that helps it rise up so i'm just going to put a good teaspoon i'm going to put a bit more in actually of that i may put a little bit more 
So, uh, I put quite a lot in. But that's okay, it doesn't matter how much you put in. Just put, as long as you don't put too much in, you're going to taste it. That's it, if you do put too much in, sometimes you can taste the soda, which is not always nice. But, you know what? It just helps the, the whole thing to rise. Now, I'm going to put in some delicious Billington's brown sugar. I love Billington's sugar, it's natural. This wonderful natural sugar, which I put in. Now, you don't have to put the sugar in. I always say a little bit of sugar doesn't do any harm. And also, I think sometimes, you know, when it's the natural product, it's, it's so much better. So I'm sort of trying to get, it's a bit lumpy, so I'm trying to get the sugar out actually a little bit. So I'm getting in there. Right, now, we've had a few texts or emails saying um, we can't get buttermilk. Okay, it's not always easy, but the wonderful thing about me doing this you can use anything. And if you put, so for instance, full fat milk with some lemon juice in it, leave it overnight, it's soured anyway, so you can use that. Now, obviously, you need the whey, so it's the whey we're looking for, so we want the milk. So use yogurt, sour cream, anything will do. Literally, anything will do. So I have, just to help you, I have put some plain low fat yogurt in here, actually, and one carton or 175, I think, of buttermilk. That's all I've done. So just to show you, you can do it with anything at all. So we're going to take this, and my sugar now is, the holes have already gone, okay? And I'm now going to just pour it all in. Just take every bit. There we go. Right, bring, now, watch me. You get your hand, you bring it in. The thing about sourdough, or think about wheaten bread, is the fact you don't kill it. It's got to look a little bit like porridge, thick, thick porridge. So you literally go like this, okay? That's all it is. Get your hand in there. I love doing this. Now, at this stage, once you know how to do this, you can add sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, you can add seeds to it. You can actually do anything with it. Great with cheese, lovely with cheese, really, really, really good. So you bring it in, bring it in, it's nearly really done. Now, because I'm going to take it even a little bit softer, just adding a little bit of water, not much, just a little bit, just, just make it a tad softer. Right, see how soft it look, really soft, it's lovely, it's perfect. I can make it even a little bit softer, look, there we go, perfect. Now. That is really soft. So before I do this, I'm just going to take this off. There we go. I'm just going to rinse my hands for a minute. Just, just clean them off. Take this over. There we are. Clean them off. Because it'll be a little bit easier to deal with. So go and wash your hands. Go and wash your hands. Have you washed your hands all right? Yep. Right, okay, so we've got that. Take this out. Clean up. It's always good to clean up after yourself. Right, we'll put that there. Now, just going to take this off. I Did you notice I've got a cloth here just to stop the bowl from moving? Now, I'm going to use... Right, you turn the oven on. You've got the tin in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some flour. This is the stone ground flour. That's it. I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to take it out, put it onto here. That's all it is. There we go. Done. Now, I'm now going to take, take that out of the way for a second because we'll use that in a minute. I'm now going to take a hot, my hot tray out of the hot oven. Right, don't burn yourselves guys, please. So there's the hot tray. Right now, with the tray, you're now going to add some flour. Right, now the next thing is, I'm now going to just bring it over like this. That's it, bring it over. And I'm going to cut it into four. Oopsie. You don't want to make it, what you don't want to do, is make it into, um, oh, I'm making, getting, getting it everywhere. 
I don't want to make it into one big one, take too long to cook, but I can, you can do one big one. So, this point, I'm just going to cut it in half. It'll take about 25 minutes. Right. I'm going to take this, hand in flour, bring it in, and I'm just going to careful, carefully, just bring it into a round. Now, you see how it's, do you see how it's not exactly, it's got little bits in, but that's what I want. I'm now going to take this into the flour, and I'm going to go like that, and like that. So I'm going to pop that on there. I'm going to do another one. Now, the reason I've got it on such a high heat is because obviously they're small. Now, if you have it bigger, you don't have to have it quite so high. Right. There we are. I'm going to actually do this in a minute, so I'll turn it down in a minute. Put that on there. Push it down. Just press it down. Another one. I love doing this. I'm a very happy lady. Now, just imagine, get this ready and put it in the fridge overnight. Just bang it in the oven. That's it. Perfect. Done. Another one. Okay. There we are. Done. Right. All you do is now take your knife in, 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 like that, like that, like that. Okay. Now, here we go. Flour. Flour on the top, because that's what will give it the distinct look, being a soda bread. Okay, now I'm just going to wash my hands again. So go off you go, go and wash your hands. Oh. Is everybody following me? There we are, all finished. It's now going in the oven for about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Done? Off we go. Now. Right, so we'll keep an eye on, please, 15 to 20 minutes. Can you put it on my clock, please? Thank you. 15 to 20 minutes. Right, I'm just going to clear up before we start. Has everybody done that? Thumbs up, please. Come on, thumbs up, because I can't move on until I know. Thumbs up. How many thumbs are up, by the way? <laughs> Nobody's coming, Count. So this is what I presume you're fine. Right. Yes, I will. James, James, what you do is you put your stone ground flour and your white flour into the bowl, 360 grams of stone ground, 120 grams of white, then you put in about 60 grams of sugar, around 60 or 30 or less or 20 or none. Then you put in um, salt, season with salt. You must season with salt, otherwise it'd be tasteless. Then you put in about 450 mils of cream. But the thing is about the cream, not cream, sad milk or something like that. But the thing about it is, if you do that, you can use yogurt, buttermilk, anything you like. As long as it's, here we are, done. That's my water to drink. So that's all it is. So in recap, I was a bit, dis bit distorted then. Uh, 350 mil, 60 mils of stone ground flour or wholemeal flour, 120 grams of plain flour, 60 grams of sugar, a bicarb of soda, a good teaspoon, I put a teaspoon and a half actually in the end, a good teaspoon and a half, rounded. And then I put in, um, and obviously the butter, 60 grams of butter. And uh, yeah, salt. That's all it is. And then I put it in the oven on, in four loaves. I did four loaves. That means they're small, so I can just cut them and take a piece off. And I've now put them in for about 15, 20 minutes, I reckon. 20 minutes at 220 Celsius, something like that, five gas, something like that. So whatever you fancy. So we'll see how they go. Just a question though, so does that remain at 220 Celsius? Uh, we might, I'm going to have a look at it in about 10 minutes. If I think it's going a bit brown, I might just turn it down a tad. But if I think it looks all right, then I'll just leave it. 
all right so we'll see how it goes so stick with me I'm not going to change anything it might be there the whole time because you need that strength of heat to to get it up now obviously you can do it in a loaf tin you can do it in one of these I'll show you I've got a loaf tin which I was going to do and actually in the end of the day I decided not but I can do it in one of these all right so you know lovely little loaves same thing but they would take about, take about 40 minutes to cook like that because they're they're sort of deeper and they're the depth and so it's not as easy so this is just time scaling here and that's all i'm doing time scaling. and you just cut it like an ordinary loaf bread right into the minestrone i tell you i am actually really hungry and i've really been looking forward to this because i really want to do it now a lot of people said they couldn't get um past the pasta the user pasta but in the end you could just use any pasta flowers bows um, shells anything the reason i like to use these is because it looks it looks a bit like rice and it's delicious they're delicious so it's just another way of doing it honestly little bits of spaghetti just tear the spaghetti off it, i think it looks really pretty with torn off spaghetti so we're doing whatever now so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to do it in this big dish here okay my faithful stove lovely dish and i'm putting in some lovely rapeseed oil you can use olive oil i know that's in the recipe so what i'm going to do i'm going to peel i was going to put two of these but these are big carrots so i decided to put just one in the end because there's no point in putting two because they really are huge so i'm now going to show you i'm going to cut up and i'll pop them into a bowl as i do it so how you cut up a carrot now you obviously all know how to cut up a carrot but obviously i would have not peeled it i would have cut it into i would have cut it into uh, batons but well let's just do this okay so we we, we got it nicely there we are and i'm just going to cut round i think the one thing about minestrone is that it looks pretty because when it's everything is cut the same what happens to it it actually it, you can see all the cuttings and really enjoy it and enjoy the basically your skills now cut it into long slices like that that'll be fine as you see i'm not being exact am i so cut it into three it's just into squares so you can three there we are oh, i've actually cut a bit more no, and then it's not very good but i'm not bothered i'm trying to show you it actually doesn't matter it's just what matters is you get it more or less the squares or the rectangles so we're going to pop this now this is the bit there we are i've cut that do you see how lovely they're looking there we are how lovely how easy that is and we're going to pop that in there we are. I did it really slowly then for you. Now I'm going to just bring this so in, in, in. Right now, first lot. Right, we're now into an onion. How to cut an onion? So push. So we're going to cut this nice red onion up, and we're going to peel it. Now this is all you do. Peel. Take off the peel. There we are. Oopsie how easy is that keep on going how easy is my my bin just by this if I'd, I mean so great to have a bin I've started a new selling kitchens because I just think don't get me wrong I've got a very very there's a very lovely designer the company Stephen Fury who is who's um, started this and he is a great designer and um, he does everything that I want like for instance you know this next to me and things like this so yeah so those kitchens are really important everything has to work ergonomically don't you love that word ergonomically when I did interior design because design is one of my passions I love design I really do I went to art college I love design right there we go now here we go did you see me do that i didn't go quite to, to the root the reason why 
you don't go to the root, you're not going to kill it. You're not going to start crying and kill it. You can actually bring it into one and just do it quickly. If you, if you don't do it this way, it takes a lot longer. And also you're going to probably start crying. So push. That's it. Keep going. Right, and again, I've got my little squares. My little squares. Okay, so if you have a little bit at the end, you just go like that. Now, what I'm going to do is pop this little bit in. Okay. So we're going to pop that in here on a low heat. There we are. Just on a low heat. I'm just going to... It's really low, actually. There we go, because you don't... cut celery. But I have to tell you it's so easy once you know how. Now I think I've shown some of you how to do it. Now if you cut it like that, take the first bit off, there we go, take it underneath like that, there we go, like that, there we go. Now we're going to do the next one, but be careful please, be careful with your with your fingers with this honestly please be careful that there we are like that there we go now having done that i've got my pieces i'm now going to take this chop it again into squares everything's in squares there we go this is all about chopping today. Chopping. There we are. Now we're going to do it in squares here. Here we go. Okay, there we go. See how easy it is. I always, do you know what? I love the smell of that of the, the uh, vegetables going anyway already. You know, I'm not being, I'm not being over, over, over specific. You know, I'm not saying it has to be exactly the same size. All I'm saying is, yeah, it has to be sort of continuously the same, sort of the same, because the overall effect will show at the end, okay? But you don't have to be nickety pickety. Right, I'm going to turn this up now. Right, potato. We're going to put the potato in here. Right, this is rather a large potato, actually. And we're going to have this. I think the uh, soda bread looks as if they're doing okay. So, I mean, not soda bread, the wheat and bread. Right. There we go. Easy peasy, all right? Any questions yet? Are you all following me? No questions. I'm actually gobsmacked that I'm actually following me. Oh, okay. Well, tell me. Okay, what do you think of the Netflix? I'm really enjoying it. And I'm also doing the Rachel Ray show out there, which is really exciting. And doing, I did a sort of leftover thing with Musaka out there. Um... Uh, you know what? That's so nice of you. I'm so glad, so glad you're enjoying it because I'm loving it. Do you know what? It's a little bit of fun. It's fun. It's not serious, although the underlying thing is serious, I think. I think it's a serious subject because we don't use our leftovers enough. But I do think, there we are, I do think we need to think about what we're doing. We really do. Right, so we've got this potato. Not yet, no. It will do. Okay, is that David? Okay. Hi, David. How are you? Hope you had a good Christmas. I really do. I know it was a bit strange. So just a little bit strange. Do you see how it's all coming together? There we go. I hope you're all with me here. Um, 
Yeah, I couldn't actually, I was so looking to coming back today. I was so looking forward to seeing you all and, um, you know, working with you all because, you know, with this other lockdown, it's a nightmare. It's a complete nightmare. So we've got to have a bit of fun. That's why I love the Netflix show so much because it's fun. It's tongue in cheek. You know how easy, you know how easy it is to laugh at oneself it is. You have to laugh at yourself. If not, you might as well give up. So I think, I think the whole world is a caricature. I'm definitely a caricature. Right, okay, so we're going to do this. So here we go. So in we go. So I have done, let's just recap. I have done, I hope you've just learned something there. I have done the, okay, celery, onion, carrot. I'm, sure I'm standing on potato. Carrot and potato. So we're just, it's all in there. So now I'm going to do the courgette. Now I know courgette isn't in season, but I couldn't help myself. It actually did look really good. Um, so, there we go. I am trying to do things in season. Things in season I think is so important. So important. It's, you know, it's where I was at my farm market the other day and some of the stuff they had was just beautiful. I had my first fresh spinach the other day. Oh, it was just gorgeous. It was superb. I mean, I mean it, superb. Absolutely glorious. This is, all this is, guys, is a chopping game. Nothing else. But never mind, we can talk as we go along so we can have some fun. Now, did you know that they're doing, that on the 16th, I think, of January, the real Gary Marigold Hotel is coming out again on BBC Two. So it's got another chance for people to see it if they didn't get it the first time round. So I think that's great fun. And I will try and get a call in, if possible, with Bobby George, Miriam or somebody, which will be good fun. Now we're nearly, okay, we're, I'm nearly in there. See how it's cooking away? Cooking away, we're ready, we're nearly ready now. Good, okay, I shall look at the bread. Right. Yep, I shall look at the bread in a mo. Right. There we go. And you know, it's so full of goodness this, and it's so warming on a winter's day. And it will last, that's the thing. Right, done. Now, finish. Now we'll do the garlic in a minute. So what I've done is, I've got a litre and a half of stock. Popping it in. I'm also popping in um, a tin of plum tomatoes, which I've chopped up. There we go. Perfect. Right, I've now, I'm now going to put in some tomato puree, but not much, just a bit. Okay, there we go. Right, we're now going to cook off slowly the, ve the vegetables while I just, here we are, bring it up to the boil. There we go. Oh, that's beginning to look lovely already. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, that's it. Right, we're just going to bring that up to the boil and take that thing. So let's just give this a little bit of a wipe down before I carry on my next one. So, love all this. Now, if you're dealing with a knife, I wanted to do this with you today. I wanted to show you. It's really important. Okay. Okay, there we go. And by the way, I only use the stock cube, quite frankly, in there, because, to be honest with you, I couldn't, I didn't want to make any more stock. I've made so much. I tell you what, I made my turkey last with the stock as well, with everything, uh, over 10 days. I did different things from it, which was so good. Right, this is all coming beautifully, taking it up. Hi, now we're going to turn it down a bit. Right. Okay, good. I'm going to have a look. I'm just going to pop it and look at the bread. Okay. No, not quite. Right, please leave it longer. It needs another 10 minutes. 
Okay, so please leave your bread for another 10 minutes. Oh, there we go. I'm not being very rough with it. Right, garlic. Oh, the smell of that basil is wonderful. Garlic, here we go. You cut off tail, top and tail. Okay, might as well do it all. Four garlic, I put a lot of garlic in because I like to have lots and lots of garlic in my minestrone. Yes, because I didn't want to, it will lose, although the garlic, good question, although the garlic it would have tasted, it's less time you have it in, the more intense the flavour is, believe it or not. Because sometimes you can lose flavour in garlic if it's not, if it goes in too early. So I put half in now and half in at the end. Yeah, I just added the basil. You don't have to add it now. It, it doesn't matter. You can add it whenever you fancy. Okay. Oh, that's gone on the floor. Oh, that's gone on the floor too. Oh, five seconds. Come on. Five seconds. Five seconds, guys. Oh. Five seconds. Don't tick me off. Oh, I better put it in water. No, there'll be somebody who, out there, said, why did you do that? Right, I understand you. I get it. Right. Okay. I love this garlic, I really do. Now, I'm going to put a bit of salt with this garlic, because that also helps. A little bit of salt brings the flavour out. Okay, uh, there we go, keep going, keep going. Please watch Netflix, if you haven't, please watch it, because the more people watch it, the more people... Now I'm going to put half of that in, just half. And then the other half, I'm putting in the bowl. And did you, did you enjoy it? Oh, the tips are great. Yeah. So my question to you is, can you share with us um, how you would maybe use your mini to still have a better work? Meatballs and puree it all up as a sauce, cook some meatballs and have it in and bake it in the oven with cheese on the top. Or I'd make it into another super puree of soup or really anything because it's a, it's a sauce already, because there's enough, if you can understand, there's a lot of ingredients in there, and it's not a thin soup, it's a thick soup, so you've got it very saucy, it's going to be, you know, so it's very, th look at it, look how thick it is already, look, so it's already there, you put it on pasta, make a sauce and put it on pasta, anything. Now what I'm doing here is, this is actually too, I'm actually, to make it, rather than put it into water, I'm actually putting it into, oopsie, I'm just peeling it with a peeler. But do you know what? I'm not going to, because it's too soft. Genuinely, it's just too soft. So all I'm going to do is show you how to do it. Right, to, to do a concasse. First of all, I get all the tomatoes ready, all of them. Oh, this is a bit firmer, but never mind. I'm still going to keep the skin on, I think, this one. Right, so take this. Take that, okay, those are, those, that's your three points. Right, I'm just gonna oh, turn this down because that's good. Right, you then take the inside off, all right? So, you're left with that. So you take the inside out. You, I normally do it with a smaller knife, actually, a paring knife, but never mind. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna be silly and go chefy on you. I probably, or I've got, you know, guys, you know my chef's white. You know why I wear my chef's white, don't you? You know, because I feel more comfortable. Right, there we go. <sighs> there we go, off we go. That is a really, that, that is a really soft tomato. It's almost coming away in my hand. Now, if I was good, 
I could take, if you have a lot of tomatoes and it's in season, you can take that, puree it, and you can make tomatoes as consomme. Literally, take the insides of your, of your tomato, puree it, and put it through a fine muslin. It's yummy in the summer. Obviously, we can't do it now because... Right, when you cut tomatoes, you don't, you cut, to go through the skin, you cut from the flesh to the skin. You do not cut the other way around because it's much harder to cut through that skin. So, go like that. Okay. And also, when you're cutting tomatoes, it's always better to do every stage through rather than doing it one by one. Just repeat every stage through to the end. Now I'm into the cutting. So just you see how much easier it is to do it all in one go. Right, you're going to take this. Again, concast. Now again, I'm not going to have such tiny concast. I'm going to just have what I call a normal size contest. There we go. It really is mushy. This is going to go too mushy in, the, in there, actually. I'm almost tempted to, because it's so mushy, I'm just going to roughly cut it, because it's just too mushy. It's too mushy. So that's it. It's all I can do, because I can't actually do anything else. So I'm going to have to put this straight in, believe it or not. Right, in we go. <sighs> to mush up even more. So that's what I... ingredients aren't quite what they should be and that's why it actually you need to change sometime okay we're going to just turn this oh, that's that's boiling away now we're now into our french beans now i'm going to put in the ouzo the the ouzo. um i'm going to put in the pasta in there okay so i'm going to turn it up so we're going to do that so it's really in there Okay, pop it in. Now you're going to find it very thick. Right, we're also going to put in lovely French beans. Now, you can use peas or well, French beans, it doesn't matter. I normally do this. I'm a bit naughty. So. Don't you find these days beans take a lot longer to cook than they used to? Really, they do. You know what? I don't want to. I've had enough cabbage over the holes. I don't want cabbage. I'd rather have peas, a few beans, or whatever's out there, really. Peas, even frozen peas are great, you know? Anything will do. Anything. But again, it should be seasonal, but being a bit naughty today. And I'm going to have to behave myself, aren't I, really? Because actually, it's not fair. Right. Right, now, okay, the rest of the garlic. Yeah, you can put any type, any type at all. Uh, you can put the, any shape, any small ones. But remember, the only thing you have to remember when you're putting pasta, different shapes of pasta, that what's going to happen is, you, it's going to sup up the liquid in the pasta and it's going to make it even thicker than it already is so you're going to end up with a really really thick so i'm now going to put the rest of the this in the basil in why not just use it all so now i'm going to look at the bread in a second we're nearly there so okay right i'm now going to put in some beans now i have got these kind of leany beans tinned you can obviously do them yourself which is what I do, but I don't think it's fair again getting people to ask people to do that sort of thing. Now, this is a one-pot meal. So I'm just going to leave this on for a second to get the pasta going. Really low. There we go. Put the lid on, because it needs a lid on. So I'm going to take this off, take this off, and I'll put some chilli in a minute. See how much chilli we need. Now, I need, what I need to do is wipe the side. So, please clear up. Clear up, if you can, just to, make, just to get it organised for you. While I'm organising me, you can organise you. So, that'll all work. So, uh, 
I know this is very simple this tonight, but actually I think simplicity is sometimes the way to go. And also, my tonight is all about tonight is all about chopping. Chopping, chopping, chopping. Right. Okay, so and also not only chopping, it's all about it's all about just having fresh vegetables, just feeling okay, you know, just getting a feeling a bit healthier because I don't know about you guys. I really indulge myself, but it doesn't matter. You know. As James Martin, I saw James Martin, a tweet from James Martin actually, and he was saying, Oh, enjoy yourself. I agree. I think you've just got to enjoy yourself. But there's no reason why you can't think what you're eating. So you can enjoy yourself, put the goodies in there, lovely stews, lovely casseroles, lovely mashed potato. What could be nicer? Now I'm gonna put in a minute, I'm gonna put a little bit of rub mushroom, and I'm gonna put a little bit of the ghost chili that actually I got from the shelves, the larder of the best leftovers ever. I'm still using it. Not surprised. Now, let's have a look. Let us go to the oven. Guys, I want you to go to your oven now. Have a little look at it. I think mine is nearly done. Oopsie. Okay. Right. Right. Mine is done. So, I want to wait till you've got yours out. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get a basket actually. I need a basket. I've got a, have we got a basket we can use? Because I'd like to get a basket and show you what I do with this. Okay, we're just, we're just getting... Martin, listen, Martin is looking for a basket. I'm just going to sit down for a minute. I'll tell you why. Because we're sort of in the zone now just to chat for a bit. That's perfect. How are we doing for timings? <gasps> oh my god oh my god that's so good <gasps> oh my goodness me that's so good so I'm going to put some really hot hot bread in here oh god that's all you do by doing that cross you've got the natural there's a lot of bread here <laughs> how much it does okay oh right oh now guys didn't even have to cut it right okay so next thing next thing we're just going to have a look at this oh it's coming it's coming it's coming slowly but surely right See how much thicker it's got. Oh my God, it's so thick. Right, that pass a little bit thicker. All you have to do is add a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is just take the kettle. Yeah, I'm just gonna go there. Guys, thank you for that question about seasoning because I don't season anything till the end. Okay, now I've put a little bit more water in because, because it basically needed it. Now, what I'm doing, because that pasta is sucking it all up, what I'm going to do now is chop up some parsley. Right, seasoning. I'm going to put a little bit of chilli. Now, please don't put too much because it's the children. It's lovely to get the kids to eat this. Whoopsie. To get the kids to eat this. So I'm going to literally put that amount. That's all. Nothing else. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of this marjoram in here. Only because I quite like marjoram in my... There we are. This, is, this marjoram. Okay. Which is lovely. Now... I'm going to, what I'm going to do is chop some parsley. So we're going to take some parsley. Oh, I love a big thing of parsley. Ah, oh, my local market. Isn't that gorgeous? Push that away. Right, we're going to, this is for garnish. This is a bit of parsley. Right, now what we're going to do, 
that's it. We don't need any more than that. And I think, you know, you're not, the thing about all this sort of thing, you're not trying to be, again, fine dining. Actually, with that parsley, I'd actually put it into a stock, but I haven't got any at the moment. So I'm going to just put this here. Now I'm going to taste it. Ooh. It's got a life of its own. Right, here we go. Taste. Oh, yum. Now, it needs seasoning. Quite a bit. Right. Now, okay. now remember, my stock, because I did use a stock cube, my stock also had seasoning in it already. So, um, you can't put too much in. I'm going to get a slightly bigger spoon. Doesn't mean I'm being greedy. It means I want a good taste, so I really get the... Yum. Now, did you see how much chilli I put in? I can still taste it. It's very good indeed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put half this parsley on. Just bring it in. I'm still cooking this pasta, which is looking great. Okay. the chilli guys that was not me I mean of course it was me but that was the chilli hang on I'm going to... oh excuse me sorry guys I'm doing a rosemary god honestly right here we go right this is just about ready I'm going to give it two more minutes while we chat now please tell me whether yours ready or not Please tell me, because it should be, because um, unless your pieces were a little bit bigger. If they were bigger, you'd probably leave it, leave it a little bit longer. Let me just check my potato, actually. Hang on. Oh, God, it's perfect. Right. Okay, so there we go. So basically, you've just got to... Well, mine was small, so mine wasn't going to take very long anyway. But if yours is not so long, give me a give me um, a sign. Where can we do a sign? Thumbs up. Can we do a sign? Oh, I'm sneezing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so naughty. Right. Okay. Here we go. I'm still it's gone into my eyes. Okay, I'm going to have to get a tea towel, I think, because. I cannot use, I cannot believe how little, how little I use. Oh. This one, this is a rice spoon from Holland. Indonesian, especially for rice, isn't it wonderful? You can, you can look for them on the Amazon. It is an actual rice spoon from, from got it from Den Haag, from Den Haag. It's lovely. I love it. I use it for absolutely everything. Right, mine is ready. So what I'm going to... Sorry, yes, sometimes I need a bit too much pepper or chilli. Is there a, uh, a way you can... Yes, the potato will help take it up. But I'm afraid a little bit of lemon in this one, probably, because there's potato already. Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put this in. There we go. Going to turn it off. Right. Let's do this. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit of this on. There we are, not much. And now I'm going to put some parmesan. Oh my god. Now I'm going to have some hot roll. Right, everybody. That is my delicious minestrone soup. Now, obviously, it's full of goodies. You've got lovely, so heartening. You can put meat in there. You can put sausages in there. You can put anything in there. You can delve it up with bacon, with anything. It's so yummy. Or vegetarian. Just use, just use lots more beans. Maybe some lentils in there. But what is so nice is, I'm just going to do this. 
Hang on. That is so fresh. Do you know what? That is utterly delicious. It's perfection. It is so fresh. And what I do is I tend to take my bread, take the bread. Look how lovely and dark it is. Look, put it in. And I always have it with a little bit of bread. That was so greedy. That was so greedy. I burnt my mouth. Sorry, guys. I'm not eating it yet. It's too hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It should. One thing you don't want is over soft pasta, but if it goes soft, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's what's so nice about this. But this is a great meal. For me, this is a fabulous meal. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. You can't see me, can you? One and a half litres of stock. One and a half litres, but then I put some water in because it got too thick. But which is exactly what you have to do. I use one and a half litres of stock cubes. Well, no, I mean stock. But then I put in some, but <laughs> my mouth. I can't believe I burned my mouth. Okay. I put one and a half litres of um, stock, then you, because the pasta's whoosh, up the stock, the water, I put in a little bit more water, okay? So basically, um, just to bring it in. So it's a, it's a thick, look, it's a thick soup, which is what it's meant to be like. Thick, thick, lovely, thick soup. Um, that's why it's all in one meal. That's why you can put some meat in there, sausages, as I said. You can put anything in there and make it your own. You've got your bread to go with it, which is quick. You've got everything to go with it. Now, are there any more questions, please? And I do hope that you don't burn your mouth, please. And don't um, sneeze like me. Don't let... <laughs> Those who know me know exactly what I'm going through. <laughs> but it serves me right. You know what? I was too eager. I put my tongue. I was too eager to get in there. Any more questions? A couple more questions. Can you freeze it and can you reheat it? Right. The answer is, yes, you can freeze it. Um, the answer is, yes, you, re you can do it. Absolutely. There's no reason why. But why? Minestrone is one of these things, I think, is that lasts for days in the fridge, about four or five days. Um, it will, it's a great lunch. It's a great thing. But yes, you can freeze it. No, I, I warrant that. Absolutely. Yeah, you can. And you can freeze it up. The only thing, I'm going to tell you, okay, the only thing that happens, guys, is if you freeze a root vegetable, like a turnip or a, or um, that is, it's big in a chunk, like a potato, what happens is, what happens is, um, if you freeze that, it crystallizes. So the problem is, it's, it goes mushy. So, like, for instance, you know what happened to the tomato earlier? I had one tomato that was great, one mush. Well, I reckon the frost got to the tomato and turned it into mush. That's what I think happened. So um, that's why that would happen. You know why? Because I keep all my vegetables outside. <laughs> it was obviously, it did freeze a bit in one of those boxes. Because I find um, vegetables last so much longer when they're outside. I've got them all in Tupperwares, I mean big boxes. And I put all the salad together, all the, but if it's, if it's got freezing in the morning and if it's going to be like that, shove your lettuce and delicate stuff in the fridge. Otherwise, it's such a good idea to put it outside in boxes. I've just have got mine in sealed. Nothing happens to them. I'm still using vegetables from Christmas. That's how good it is. And that's why with farm shops, they're really cold. So they, their vegetables last a lot longer than they would at home. A lot longer. So outside is a good idea. little tip. Um, what was the other thing? Is freeze it? Yes. Was there another question? People were saying that I took them along that their kitchen smells incredible. Oh. Great smells. Oh, do you know what? I'm so glad you've said that because we have incredible smells here. We are loving it, especially the bread. Once the bread came out with this, it is so delicious. So delicious. So, and I'm such a happy bunny. I'm longing to do this now. Yes, I am. 
Now, oh my God, my goodness me, I've got that chili. Do you know, I hardly put anything in there. It's that ghost chili, you know. You've got to be careful with that ghost chili. Yeah, no, it's good for me, not for kids. Must be careful, be, be careful. Now, tomorrow, what I'm doing is I'm doing something a bit fun. I'm going to be on face, Facebook Live tomorrow at six o'clock for fun and I'm doing a Facebook live with David So and Jackie. Jackie, they're the, my co-hosts people on the best leftovers ever. We are having a cook along and they are doing the potato cakes with a leftover. I'm doing mine with spinach, potato cake, just potato, you know the ones. And I'm teaching you how to do some scrambled eggs. Now, if you want to come in with me and just watch this bit of fun, it's not going to take long, probably be half an hour, but it's going to be a bit of fun. So please, please, please join me. It would be such fun to, to, um, uh, to hear from you. But also, and send me, send me images, ask them questions. Ask Dave and Jackie some questions. But also, more to the point, more to the point, it's a great supper, so you can cook it for supper, for you. It's a sort of early supper, which is, couldn't be more better on your tray in front of the telly which is to me such a treat so you can be your your supper tomorrow night eggs all you need is potato smashed potato and and just some smashed potato about 360 grams of mashed potato no butter and just some butter um, soft butter about 60 grams of soft butter and um, about 90 grams of flour to that something like that and also some seasoning so that's all it is and whatever leftovers or not in case it might be and you can just have um just have it on potato scones okay so what could be nicer so please please join me at six o'clock uh in la it's i think it's about eight o'clock in the morning or nine ten o'clock okay in la i know it's ten o'clock so they're using it as a brunch for us it's a supper in new york i think it's 12 30 one o'clock. Oh, one o'clock, early lunch. It's an early lunch, one o'clock. So all over the country, all over in America, we're doing it. So please come on and watch us in America tomorrow on my Facebook Live. So please see you tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been terrific. I've loved it. Do you know why? It's sl been slow. You've got a great um, dish at the end of it and really easy people. But also, something you can do with, as I said, you can puree it, you can have it with pasta puree, you can have it with meatballs, you can have it with anything you like, just puree, because it's a thick sauce. Enjoy. So look, I'll see you tomorrow or not, see you at six o'clock, or see you next Saturday, five o'clock, same time. See you then. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.